uh, young people are taking initiative in terms of changing the world, promoting their own sexual and reproductive health and rights. And I truly believe that young people have the power. Once they're empowered, they can inf influence the society, definitely, in terms of helping the civil society, help, helping the, the government achieve the 2030 uh, agenda, as well as FP 2020 agenda. Uh, to be specific, in my country, um, UNFPA China office has funded a youth-led organization 10 years ago. In 2015, um, we had organized a group of young people who are, who, are caring, who are caring about their rights on sexual and productive health and who are um, youth leaders. So we gathered them around and so they become a, a, a program leaders. They initiated lots of peer-to-peer -peer education and they were talking to the government demanding for their rights, and they are closely working with the UN agencies, including UNFPA in China, you know, to design the programs, to participate in the program design and monitoring, and also to uh, help us uh, consult further uh, young people. So I think those are the concrete things that young people have achieved in my country. And looking forward, I think uh, there will be more young people participating in this process because 20, 2030 agenda is a more broad agenda, it's a broader agenda, and it, it, it needs the involvement of everyone, no one left behind. The major change is the change of the society, so which means the challenge never stops. It, uh, you have to react to what the situation uh, gave you. For example, uh, China with the fast urbanization process, there are a large group of young people migrating from rural area to urban area without proper life skills living in the cities. So what we do is that we have to keep up with the urbanization processes, develop uh, uh, tours, um, educational tours, uh, using the peer-to-peer -peer education so that through the peer-to-peer -peer education, those who are migrating from rural area to urban area have the skills to communicate with their parents to say no uh, to, uh, sexual, uh, to, to, to the sexual encounterment they don't want to be engaged in, to um, uh, you know, know the knowledge how to protect themselves. The most serious issue in regard to sexual and reproductive health and rights in China is about unwanted pregnancies, especially among adolescent girls. Currently in China, there are 13 million abortion surgeries happening by the uh, government uh, data which I estimate will be way much higher because there are a lot of abortion going on in private hospitals and in underground hospitals. And among all the 13 million on record abortions, uh, more than half of them are coming from young people aged 15 to 24. So, I mean, globally, uh, young people in China are contributing one quarter of the abortion surgeries, of the global abortion surgeries, which is meaning that the, the, the unwanted pregnancy is a pressing issue in my country. Uh, not that the services uh, and the commodities is hard to get, but rather the education is not uh, properly put in place to educate young girls to protect themselves, to edu educate boys to respect girls, and to um, uh, educate adolescent and young people how to communicate and how to react uh, when they are engaged in this uh, relevant uh, uh, life uh, uh, situation. So firstly, we are working with young people. Like as I said, uh, we have a group of uh, young, young excellent leaders, uh, the China Youth Network members who are actually actively promoting peer-to-peer -peer education uh, on life skills education and also on sexual and reproductive health and rights knowledges. This is a very uh, helpful uh, practice that um, helped millions of young people understand the issue itself and also uh, have the skills to uh, live in the society. And second, what we're doing is we are uh, initiating lots of campaigns at the national level using social media, using uh, uh, radio stations, and using a lot of uh, uh, online websites so that uh, we send out a clear message uh, Everyone should be responsible for their own body and should be responsible for their sexual and reproductive health and rights. Uh, in regard of uh, you are a boy, you are a girl, how old are you? So 
I think those campaigns also received very positive uh, feedbacks uh, from uh, people from all walks of life. I think linking to, to, to what I get most of this uh, conference is the local action. Definitely there are, are a lot of actions that needed to be done um, and urgently need to be done. Firstly, uh, to support, uh, consistently support young people's participation into the process of advocacy uh, as well as providing uh, knowledge to each other themselves. I know there are a lot of funding crises and there are a lot of technical limitations, but we have to stick to our mandate that uh, sexual and productive health should be provided to everyone, including young people, boys and girls, leaving no one behind. And secondly, uh, there are currently more than 100 developing countries, and many of those countries are sharing similar problems. Many of them are having a very fast urbanization. Many of them are, you know, having a poverty lift effort. Uh, many of them are, you know, running into conflict. Uh, so those situations, uh, people are, you know, in, in the, people share the seminar situations. And there are a lot of experience that could be shared in between those developing countries, especially. And so my point is uh, to strengthen the South South cooperation, especially among young people, is crucial. Uh, previously, there was no such uh, uh, experience sharing platform in between only young people from global South countries, mainly from North to South or at, like global level, regardless of the uh, country level. But I think in terms of highlighting South South cooperation, is crucial because uh, these are the young people that experience similar challenges in their life, and these are the young people that are doing similar work, and these are the young people that has the experience could be exchanged by themselves.